Whether it's being prepared for a power outage or going on a camping trip, a solar generator can really help. I just spent a small fortune on solar generators, so let's get the review underway and see which brand is the best. In the first test, we'll see which solar generator charges the fastest using a solar panel. Then we'll see which one delivers the most watts. We'll also see which one offers the most watt hour capacity. At a price of $180 before the coupon or $110 with the coupon is this Ballybat brand. All the solar generators we'll be testing cost under $300 and have a rated output of at least 300 watts. It's supposed to have a total capacity of 257 watt hours. Built in pure sine wave AC outlets, we're gonna test that. It also has a light. And the Ballybat is made in China. And the Ballybat is very light at 4.62 pounds. Let's test the AC outlet on a Bailey Bat first. And a Bailey Bat's cooling fan is pretty loud at 57.4 decibels. And the outlet meter is very close to the same as the multimeter at 112.7 volts. And the Bailey Bat is fully charged. Let's first test out the solar generator powering up a 250 watt heat lamp. And the Bailey Bat is doing just fine at 225 watts and the voltage is still looking good at around 110.5. Powering up a corded drill, the Bailey Bat appears to have a built-in soft start and the drill is working just fine. About two and a half seconds for the drill to get up to full speed. At a price of $190 before the coupon or $150 with the coupon is this Gressel brand. It's supposed to offer 330 watts and 288 watt hours. It has overload, overcharge, and short circuit protection. Three USBs as well as a USB-C rated for 60 watts. Three DC outlets. Pure sine wave AC output. It'll handle up to 600 watts of surge. It comes with a 60 watt power supply. It can also be charged using your 12 volt accessory from your car. It also comes with adapters that can be used with solar panels. It includes a pretty bright flashlight. And the Gressel is made in China. And the Gressel weighs just under eight pounds. And the Gressel's cooling fan is a lot quieter than the Bailey Bat at around 49.1 decibels. The Gressel is doing pretty good at 110 volts at around 223 watts. And the Gressel has a much faster soft start and the drill is already up to speed in only one second. The Gressel has a built-in watt meter and is pretty accurate within one watt of the tester. At a price of $199 before the discount or $159 with the coupon is this Allway brand. Offers 300 watts continuous or 600 watts surge. The total capacity is 280 watt hours. It can be recharged using AC wall charging, car charging, or solar charging. Using a 100 watt solar charging panel, you can charge it in three to four hours. It includes two AC ports, three DC ports, two USBs, and USB-C. It has a cigarette lighter style port as well as a DC in. And the Allway is made in China. And it's 6.735 pounds for the Allway. And the meter is upside down, but the Allway is measuring two watts different than the tester. And the Allway is at 112.1 volts or about 1 point volts higher than the Billy Bat. The cooling fan is a little bit louder than the Gressel's at 56.2 decibels. When it came time to run the drill, the Allway said no way and it powered itself down. At a regular price of $200 or $160 with the coupon is this EBL brand. It offers up to 330 watts of pure sine wave electricity. It can handle up to 600 watts of peak power. It has three DC ports, three USBs, and a USB-C. It has a pure sine wave 110 volt outlet. It includes a port for charging with solar power. It has a fast charging function and can be recharged more than a thousand times. It comes with a 110 AC wall adapter, 12 volt car charging cable, and one MC4 connector cable. And the EBL is made in China. And the EBL weighs just over 7.4 pounds. And the cooling fan on the EBL is the loudest yet at 58.2 decibels. I'm using a power strip so that we don't have to read an upside down tester. And the EBL is about the same as the Bailey Bat at around 225 watts and 110.5 volts. And there's about a six watt discrepancy with the EBL. And the EBL did the best job so far at 0.7 seconds for the drill to reach full RPM. At a price of $200 before the use of the coupon or $170 with the coupon is this Anchor brand. It's supposed to deliver up to 288 watt hours. You can recharge with an 18 watt or higher USB-C wall charger. You can fast charge with two 140 watt two-way USB-C ports. It has a 30% smaller design than similar power stations. You can fast recharge up to 80% in one hour with the dual USB-C ports. Or you can use solar panels or your vehicle to recharge the unit. The kit includes a 140 watt USB-C to USB-C charging cable. Includes a very innovative light design. Includes two USB-As, a 12 volt car socket, a solar input, a 15 watt USB-C, a 100 watt USB-C, and two USB-Cs rated for 140 watts. It does not include an AC outlet. And the Anchor is made in China. And it's 6.34 pounds for the Anchor. We'll skip testing the Anchor for now since it doesn't have an AC outlet. 
At a price of $230 before the coupon or $215 with it is this Zero Core brand. Just like the other brands, it's designed for 300 watts. It's supposed to have a capacity of 280 watt hours. Two outlets are supposed to offer pure sine wave electricity. It has two AC outlets, one 12 volt out port, one 12 volt in port, one USB fast charging port, and three USB ports. It even comes with a 60 watt solar panel. The kit also includes a wall charger, cigarette lighter adapter, 12 volt charging cable, a solar charging cable, along with several adapters. And a zero core is made in China. And the Zero Core is very light at just under 5 pounds. And the Zero Core's cooling fan is at just under 54 decibels. Unfortunately, the Zero Core is rated for 300 watts, but it isn't able to power up the 225 watt light. I used the variable speed trigger to give the Zero Core a soft start. But once again, the Zero Core powered itself down when I powered up the drill quickly. At a price of $259 before the coupon, or $229 with it, is this Jackery brand. It's supposed to offer up to 300 watts continuous or 600 watt surge. It's supposed to offer 293 watt hours of capacity. They claim it only takes two hours to recharge up to 80%. They claim it can recharge itself and charge up to six devices all at the same time. It has two AC outlets, one 60 watt USB-C port, one fast charge port, one USB-A, and one DC port. The Jackery does not include a light. And the Jackery is made in China. And the Jackery weighs 7.185 pounds. And the Jackery has the quietest cooling fan yet at 47.4 decibels. The voltage is more than adequate at 111.1 while powering up the heat lamp. And the Jackery's watt meter is very close to the same as the energy use meter. The Jackery has more than enough power for the drill and is taking right at one second for the drill to reach full RPM. At a price of $270 without the coupon or right at $200 with it is this Blue Eddy brand. It's supposed to offer up to 600 watts of continuous or 1200 watts of surge. They claim you can charge it from zero to 80% in 30 minutes. It comes with a power cord for charging the unit as well as the solar connectors. It has a peak capacity of 268 watt hours. Supports up to 200 watts of solar input. A single power cable is able to charge this solar generator at 350 watts. It includes three different DC 12 volt ports, two USB A's as well as a USB C. It also has two different 120 volt outlets. And the Blue Eddy is made in China. And the Blue Eddy is by far the heaviest yet at 10.84 pounds. And the Blue Eddy is at 120.3 while powering up the light. And the watt meter on the Blue Eddy is is very close to the same as the energy use meter. And the drill reached full RPM the fastest yet with the Blue Eddy on the first attempt at around a half a second. However, the Blue Eddy's dashboard is showing that it's overloaded on the second attempt. I use the adjustable trigger on the drill for a soft start and the Blue Eddy works just fine. And the Blue Eddy's cooling fan is pretty quiet at around 47 decibels. At a retail price of $280 or $230 with the coupon is this Toman brand. It offers 600 watts of continuous power or 1200 watts peak. It has a total watt hour capacity of 299. They claim you can power up the nine devices simultaneously. They claim you can recharge up to 80% in 2.7 hours. And the Toman has three 12 volt ports, a 60 watt USB-C, three USB-A's, and two AC outlets. It also has a port for a jump starter, but the kit does not include jump starter cables. The kit comes with several adapters for recharging the unit. And the Toman is made in China. And the Toman weighs even more than the Blue Eddy at 14.1 pounds. And the Toman's cooling fan is around 57.8 decibels. It's at 110.8 volts while powering up the heat lamp. And the Toman's watt meter is off by about 10 watts the most yet. And the drill is up to full speed in about a half a second with the Toman. If you're looking for a solar generator that delivers a strong burst of current out of the gate, the Blue Eddy and the Toman were able to power up the drill to a maximum RPM in about a half a second. If you're looking for a solar generator that doesn't make a lot of cooling fan noise, the Blue Eddy finished in first place at 45.7 decibels. Jackery finished in second place at 47.4 decibels and Gressel third at 49.1. We'll test the maximum wattage of the generators later using this fan, but let's move on and test the USB-Cs next. I'll be using a USB cable that has a 240 watt capacity. I'll start off by seeing how quickly the belly back can charge the power bank, which is nearly completely drained. The tester and the power station are both showing very close to 17.5 watts at 12 volts. Using a different tester and discharging at 5 volts, the belly bat powered itself down after reaching 14.7 watts. Let's see how it performs at 9 volts. And the Bailey Bat powered itself down at 27.1 watts. At 12 volts, 28.1 watts, and the Bailey Bat powered itself down. Unfortunately, the Bailey Bat's USB C is not able to charge at 20 volts. And the Gressel's USB C is rated for 60 watts. And the Gressel is charging the power bank at 20 volts and is right on target at 60 watts. And the Gressel made it to 13.57 watts at 5 volts and 26.89 watts at 9 volts. 33.26 watts at 12 volts and 60.5 watts at 20 volts is the best yet. And the Allway is rated for 60 watts but came up a little bit short at 56. At 5 volts, 13.63 watts and just over 24 watts at 9 volts. Just over 34 watts at 12 volts and almost 60 watts at 20 volts. 
So just about the same performance compared to the Gressel. And the ABL is charging the power bank at just about 29 watts or about half the rate of the Gressel in Allway. It's at 14.9 watts at 5 volts and 27.8 watts at 9 volts. 37.73 watts at 12 volts and 64.55 watts at 20 volts is the best yet. And the Anchor is doing by far the best yet at 92 watts charging the power bank. I tried each of the USB-C ports and they all perform the same. Since the Anchor has several USB-C ports, let's see how the Anchor performs charging three devices at once. And the Anchor is delivering 86, 95, and 32 watts for a total of 213 watts for the three ports. And the Anchor is at almost 14 watts at 5 volts and just over 24 watts at 9 volts. 38.1 watts at 12 volts and 97.3 watts at 20 volts is the best yet. Let's skip the zero core since it doesn't have a USB-C. The Jackery's USB-C is rated for 60 watts and is just over 60 watts. 14.62 watts at 5 volts and 25.75 watts at 12 volts is right on target. And the Jackery is not cooperating with the analyzer for the 12 and 20 volt settings. And the Blue Eddy performed just as well as the Anchor at just over 92 watts. At 5 volts, 14.48 watts and 27.1 watts at 9 volts. The Blue Eddy made it to 36.61 watts at 12 volts and 94.56 at 20 volts. That's almost as good as the Anchor. And the Toman is at 56.52 watts charging the power bank. And the Toman is cooperating with the analyzer for the 9, 12, and 20 volt settings. For USB charging speed, the Anchor and the Blue Eddy performed about the same at 92 watts. All of the solar generators are supposed to be able to handle at least 300 watts of continuous production. I'll use the fan speed controller to gradually increase the electrical load on the solar generators. The solar generators will be powering up some lights in a large fan. The meter all the way to the right is keeping track of the electrical load. And the belly bat exceeded its rating and it finally powered down at 368.7 watts. And the Gressel weighs over three pounds more than the Bailey bat. And the extra weight didn't help as the Gressel only made it to 276.5 watts before the overload protection kicked in and the Gressel powered down. And the Allway had no problem holding steady at just over 300 watts for a while. It finally had enough and powered itself down at 354 watts. And the EBL claims to deliver 330 watts. Unfortunately, the EBL is overloaded and powered itself down at only 260 watts, the least amount of all the brands. And the Zero Core also held up well at 300 watts and the overload protection kicked in at just about 346. And the Jackery made very easy work of holding a 300 watt load. And the Jackery did by far the best yet, finally powering itself down at 385.9 watts. And the Blue Eddy is rated for 600 continuous watts. And the Blue Eddy's overload protection kicked in at 614 watts. Just like the Blue Eddy, the Toman is also rated for 600 watts. And the Toman never powered itself down, but it did experience a pretty big voltage drop when it was pushed above 600 watts. So the Toman and the Blue Eddy are both rated for 600 watts, and they offer a maximum output of 620 and 614 respectively. For the units rated for 300 to 330 watts, the Jackery came in on top at 386 watts. All of the solar generators are fully charged. All of these units have a rated battery capacity that ranges from 250 to 300 watt hours. I'll set the testers to drain the generators at a rate of 60 watts. And the test is finished and the belly bat came up way short of its 257 watt hour rating at 192.41 watt hours. And the Gressel performed a lot better than the belly bat at 272.57 watt hours. And the Allway didn't perform quite as well as the Gressel at 255.85. And the EBL moves into second place behind the Gressel at 264.16 watt hours. The Anchor is supposed to deliver 288 watt hours, but it came up short at just over 262. And the Zero Core came up way short of its 280 watt hour rating at only 220. 22.38 and the Jackery moves into the lead over the Gressel at just under 283 watt hours. And the Blue Eddy ran out of juice earlier than most of the other brands at 236.17 watt hours. The Toman performed well at 271.27 watt hours to move into third place behind the Gressel. So the Jackery offers the most battery storage capacity at just under 283 watt hours. Gressel finished in second place at 272.57 and Toman third at 271.27 watt hours. And all of these units are supposed to be solar generators. So let's see how quickly the solar panels can charge the generators using this 100 watt panel. Connecting the solar panel to the generators is a very simple process. The solar panel already comes equipped with a 12 volt adapter that fits nicely into the Bailey Bats charging port. The solar panel is collecting sunlight and the Bailey Bats display is almost impossible to see in direct sunlight. It appears to be charging at around 38 watts. And the solar panel kit that I bought includes these adapters which will be needed for several of the solar generators including the Gressel. And the Gressel is charging at 49 watts from the solar panel. The Allway uses a standard 12 volt connector. And the Allway is doing the best yet with a 56 watt charging speed. And the EBL also uses one of the solar charging adapters. And the EBL reached a peak charging speed of 48 watts. 
Unfortunately, I don't have the adapter that's needed to charge the anchor. And the zero core is charging, but the display does not show the charging speed. The Jackery also requires the use of an adapter. And the Jackery is doing the best yet at 66 watts of charging speed. The Bluetti requires an adapter as well. And the Bluetti is doing by far the best job yet at 82 watts of charging speed. And the Toman uses a standard 12 volt connector. And the Toman is holding a steady charging speed of 68 watts. So the Bluetti has the fastest solar charging speed at 82 watts. Toman finished in second place at 68 watts and Jackery third at 66. Let's see how quickly the units can be charged with a 200 watt 12 volt socket. And the belly bat is charging at a very slow pace at only 25 watts. The Gressel is charging around 48 watts according to the analyzer. And the Allway is doing by far the best job yet at 66 watts. And the EBL is about the same as the Gressel at close to 53 watts of charging speed. Let's get the anchor for now since it doesn't offer a 12 volt charging port. And the Zero Core is going to take a really long time to charge at around 37 watts. And the Jackery charges more than twice as fast as the Zero Core at 86.7 watts. 83.5 watts of charging speed for the Bluetti is almost as fast as a Jackery. And the Toman offers a pretty fast charging speed at just below 86 watts. If you're in a hurry to charge a solar generator using a 12 volt power source, the Jackery, Toman, and Bluetti are the fastest at around 84 to 87 watts. Almost all of the power banks came with a power cord or a power supply. So let's compare the charging speed using a 120 volt power source. With the factory power supply, the Bally Bait is pretty slow to charge at around 32 watts. Let's see if we can use the Bally Bait solar generator while it's getting charged. Fortunately, the Bally Bait does allow the unit to be plugged into the wall and charging while it's in use. However, if you're draining out more than 32 watts, it's not going to charge the belly bat. With the power supply, the Gressel is at around 47 and a half watts. Unfortunately, the Gressel does not allow the device to be used while it's being charged. And the Allway is charging at around 68 watts. The Allway can charge the device while it's also being charged. And the EBL is charging at around 59 watts, which is about 10 watts slower than the Allway. Unfortunately, the EBL does not allow for pass-through charging. I'll use two 140-watt charging blocks for the anchor. And the anchor is doing by far the best job yet at 213 watts. And the anchor can be charged while it's in use. Using an AC power source, the Zero Core is charging at around 47 watts. The Zero Core can be charged while it's in use. And a Jackery is charging at around 91 watts. And a Jackery can be charged while it's powering up a device. And the Bluetti has an internal power supply and is charging at 269 watts. Very impressive! I plugged in a couple of lights and it has 635 watts going in and only 362 going out. So it's very nice that this unit will charge while it's powering up something that requires a lot of electricity. And the Toman is charging at 105 watts. Fortunately, the Toman can be charged while it's in use. This is a power bank that does not offer true sine wave electricity. The frequency is not smooth at all, and this is called dirty power, which might cause damage to sensitive electronic devices. I tested all the generators with and without an electrical load, and all the generators do offer clean electricity and a nice sine wave. I tested the maximum output of the 12 volt ports or sockets with each of the generators, and a Jackery came out on top at 155.5 watts. Toman finished in second place at 141 watts, and Zero Core third at 135. I also tested the USB A ports. Some of the solar generators have three or four USB A ports but can only charge two devices at once. The Gressel, EBL, Zero Core, and Toman allow for three USB A ports to be used at once. The maximum output for using just one port was right at 20 watts for the Gressel, Jackery, and the Toman. If you're using as many USB A ports as possible, the maximum output for the Gressel is 50 watts. The EBL produced 45 watts and the Toman 39. The EBL and the Bluetti are the only two solar generators that allow for wireless charging. So which solar generator is the best? I've converted raw performance scores into a first to ninth place ranking, and the Jackery came in on top with the best average finish of 2.5. It's pretty lightweight at just over 7 pounds, and it's also pretty quiet. It's also pretty powerful at well over 300 watts. If I could choose just one solar generator, I'd definitely go with the Jackery. It's small, light, and has the most watt hour capacity. However, if you don't mind a larger and heavier unit, the Toman and the Bluetti both deliver 600 watts of AC power. They're both great solar generators, and I'd buy either of those as well if the price was right. Please let me know if you'd like to see a review of the larger power stations. They're very expensive, and I always buy all the products that I review, so I just want to make sure that there's enough interest. All the videos in this channel include this one our viewers suggested, so if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and look forward to next time.